Welcome everyone to one of my favorite tracks. I honestly didn't expect this track to be so good. Um, I, I don't have much experience here, but I was really looking forward to this week's daily races because I wanted to learn this track. Uh, Mount Panorama, or I'm definitely saying it wrong. Uh, it's a really well-known track, especially in the Australian uh, uh, V8 Supercar Series. The GT3 series runs here too. I think they run like a 12 hour race. Goes through the night on the mountain. It's pretty cool. Um, it's worth checking out some YouTube videos on some of the races because the races are crazy. Um, so anyways, that really got me interested in this track and then it popped up on the daily races finally. So I've been putting some hours in trying to get this track down. So I spent like the last five days after work just checking it out and uh i really been working on the consistency and i think i have a really good consistency now on this track as you can see i got a 2025 uh which ain't bad i really want to get a 202 flat <laughs> um my best sectors all together uh, i can get a 2018 and if i could get in the 201s that'd be insane that's that's an alien territory but uh anyways i get it's it's saturday morning doing this video and uh, so I got tonight and I'll probably get some time on Sunday to try and get my lap time down but I'm pretty happy with the 2025 because it's extremely consistent as you'll see uh, in these next few races so these two guys in front of me uh, obviously PX7 he's a uh, actual esports racer and then there's super chicken I have no idea who this guy is but uh, you'll see the difference between the guy in the front and Mr. Super Chicken here, trying to keep up. So we're coming into the first corner. They had uh, like two car lengths on me at the start. I got such a disadvantage for some reason. So luckily I get the draft. I've got an awesome Martin behind me, and they don't have the straight line speed of the Vipers, especially in the toe here. So you'll see on the gap, my gap is actually opening was that's odd actually closed up but anyways hit this corner perfect so the biggest thing i was focusing on is just hit my consistent lines i know exactly uh where i need to be on this lap i did a practice race uh, on uh, thursday this week and actually did two races did okay i was like a ninth and a sixth but my time my qualifying time was 238 at the time and I hadn't had the consistency or the lap times down yet, so... Anyways, my biggest goal is to keep up with these two guys in front. I don't want to lose this draft. I get the mountain section pretty consistent. You'll see me catch up a little bit here. Catch up through the mountain. Get a little sideways, but it's okay. Now, for some reason, I was going down to second gear there. And I didn't realize it until later in the night. Um, but you should be using third gear through there. Accelerate at the ambulance once it's centered, and then just stay in the draft with these guys. As long as I can keep in the draft, I'll be okay. I think I'll have a chance at second place. Uh, getting by uh, optimal is going to be a little tough, I think. So coming down the chase, this is the only name uh, <laughs> corner that I actually know. Hit the 150, about one car length after the 150. Uh, board. easy, super soft on the throttle coming out of there. I don't want to end out in the dirt like Mr. Super Chicken here. So brake right after the uh, 100 board. Easy in, third gear out. Uh, really consistent times that way. So anyways, uh, when you're in the draft, you really have to kind of pay attention. Your braking zones change quite a bit. Especially at the end of this corner, uh, or the end of this straight. This is a really weird looking corner. Um, one thing I noticed the top guys doing too is they're short shifting, so I started doing that, and I honestly don't know if there's a difference. It might be like a hundredth, but it, I didn't see like an obvious top speed difference. So anyways, stay consistent through here. You gotta stay with these guys. Don't want to make a dumb mistake or something and lose the draft. It's coming to this corner. I really like this corner. I mean, I figured out second gear, but I just know that uh, with third gear, you do get a higher top speed through there. And I kind of, looking back at these replays, it's like, oh man, I made a huge mistake. Third gear. 
So coming through the mountain, I uh, love this corner. You actually stay off the throttle for a while there, and uh, you actually carry that speed. You can just fly down the mountain through here. So you're braking just before hitting the curb, and as soon as you hit that curb on the left side, you let off the brake, and then you're right back on the brakes as soon as you hit the tarmac again. Then you come down that little windy section. The car stays pretty settled through there. That's the biggest thing. you got to make sure the car is not upset and pissed off. So coming down to the chase. You probably hear me say that like ten times. I'm starting to lose these guys up front, but you'll see they make a dumb mistake. He's got them uh, uh, in the draft here. He's going to make a move on the inside. Mr. Super Chicken on uh, PX-11. But this is the braking zone. And uh, PX-11, oh, a little bump there. Goes out into the dirt. So I just, I had to make a decision. Jerk to the outside. Just barely got away with that. Now here's the thing about racing the top guys, he gave me the space, he knew he didn't have the corner, he didn't lunge on the inside, he didn't take me out, he knew he lost that corner, backed off, and now I'm kind of free to go after uh, Mr. PX7 Optimum. I was able to manage to keep up with him, uh, but you'll see that there's like one small mistake at a important section that kind of cost me any chance of uh, making a move in the chase. So, hit your braking zone a little early there, uh, probably one car length earlier. Come down to that apex, accelerate early out. You want to carry the speed up the mountain. Then this too, uh, you stay on the throttle right to the apex. And then you should be going down to third gear. Don't listen to me on uh, second gear. Or you should be at least coming out of the corner in third. You can turn in on second, but you don't want to hit the throttle in second gear at all. So he bashes the wall there, but so I watched his replay. And uh, he, he does that consistently. Like, it's a, he's got it down to a finesse where you just kiss the wall and you, you don't lose any speed and you use up the whole track. So, something I was looking at, I didn't understand how he carried so much speed because you'll see he sets a sat fastest lap on this, uh, on this lap even though he tapped the wall twice. So, little eye-opening experience, but right here is the... Uh, thump. There you go. Lost all my chance. I'm flying down the mountain with him. Super nice. Super comfortable. Lost my exit. So. We'll settle into a second place up here. Come down the chase again. Braking zone at the 150. Turn in really easy. You're rolling off the brakes here and then just ease on that. But uh, every race that I was in with Mr. Super Chicken, he made a mistake. His qualifying time is pretty good, <laughs> no doubt. But he uh, consistently makes mistakes, and uh, I took advantage each time he did. Um, the only thing is I didn't record the, uh, the next race I had to these guys, but it was the same thing. It was the same group. And uh, Super Chicken made a mistake coming down the mountain and got a penalty. So that's where I got my actual first clip for the uh, video here, is when I passed him in the penalty zone. But again, it was just him making mistakes, and I'm taking advantage of it. So just that consistency gets you pretty good results. So you see, like, the gap between the top three here is, or what? Four seconds ahead, and then he was uh, he was like our length ahead of the guys be behind him. Somehow I didn't get a clean race there. I don't remember bashing into anything, so there's that. But uh, anyways, that's Grand Trismo fashion there. So we're going into our next race here. This was I think earlier in the night. Yeah, this is the one where I qualified fifth that same lap time and uh, had some really good guys to race with, but um, honestly, it was uh, interesting. This is an interesting race because the guys in front of me were fighting the whole time, and I'm just kind of trying to find the advantage to get around them. So, like I said, this was one of the earlier races in the night, and uh, I think this was my second race of the night. I 
still trying to figure out this first breaking zone, especially like getting drafted down that front straight. But uh, I'm losing a little bit coming out of that corner every time, so I think tonight I'm going to try working on that. So the guys in front are consistently quick. Um, really good racing all around. I mean, it's, it's the nice thing about racing with other guys in the same class is they have probably about the same amount of lap time in. Uh, they have the same consistency. They have a good understanding of the car they're driving. They know how to race. They're not barging. They're not ramming you. It just changes the game completely when you can race against other drivers that can kind of respect the driving line. So this set of corners, in my opinion, is critical because uh, it helps you carry speed down the mountain. And uh, as you carry the speed, it just it opens up the lap times. Look how wild he was coming in and how much time I found just catching up, being consistent, careful on the braking zones coming down the mountain. So these guys were kind of wild in front. They were definitely getting snappy with each other. The guy in front was putting his elbows out all over the place. Uh, both of them were a little squirrely, especially coming down the mountain, that tricky section. Woo. So, coming down the chase, yet again. Uh, love this part, it's just so high speed. I'm in the draft, I hit almost 180 miles an hour. That's, that's just awesome. So, uh, gotta get on the brakes a little earlier there, but again, the biggest thing is coming off them smooth. You don't want the car to slide at all because this track is all about exit speed. But I think that's pretty typical for this game in general, is exit speed is the most critical thing about it. So I'm trying to get a clean exit out of here so I can keep with them in the draft and I get a much better exit there. You can see my delta actually comes down just a little bit, but it's hard to bake any ground, <laughs> bake, baking ground, make any ground on the guy in front when he's also in the draft, so. Anyways, make sure I hit that braking point early, clean, and then uh, rolling off the brakes again, because you don't want the car to kick out on you at all. Now the shit's getting feisty. And <laughs> hitting the wall on the outside. He's like kind of a pinball. But man, this race is just, it's so much fun, because you don't know what's going to happen in front of you. You don't know who's out of control. Even the guys at the top do struggle, because it's a difficult track. There's not much runoff. There's walls everywhere. It's, it's unsettling, there's weird bumps, and I, this was kind of a clumsy move. I should have stayed in the right line. I lost a lot of time there, probably could have made a, made a nice move there onto the inside of the mountain. But I just didn't want to upset the driver rating, because uh, I'm kind of grinding. I got to 40,000, which I was pretty happy about, so... Anyways, nice clean exit there, and the problem is I get a little kick, so you see I actually lost some time just because of that. So the delta doesn't go down because I'm in the draft. I think the draft is like uh, 1.25 or 1.5 seconds. The draft has that much effect that far back. So as long as I can stay within that window, I can keep up with these guys. So I'm coming through uh, the chase again. I got no one to make a move on. So the guy in fourth place I'm keeping a really close eye on because he is all over the place. So I'm kind of expecting him to make a mistake right there, but I'm not close enough to take advantage of it. So don't mess up this braking zone. I'm still trying to figure out the right time to brake for a lot of these corners uh, just under draft because that changes so much. You get, uh, you get used to putting lap times down a certain way, but once you're in the draft, it changes all your memory. And you have to account for that. Your turn-ins, you have to go a little earlier. It's, it's a little bit of a trick, so... Um, I figured it out later in the night, um, but we'll end this video on a high note, as you'll see uh, the next, next time around. So, coming into this corner, third gear. Nope, second gear. Idiot. So coming through, the thing is, when you're in second gear, the car gets a little slippy, uh, and the higher RPM's coming out of that corner, and you kind of have to feather it. If you dump it into third gear, you can 
kind of stay on the throttle and shoot out of there coming up the mountain. So again, just nailed that perfect. Watch how much time I make up just because I stayed off the throttle and get on the gas late. I got that section pretty comfortable now. Coming through here, I should have been in third gear. Don't know why I kept going to second. Hit the braking zone perfect. And this is where I thought I was going to catch him because I got a pretty clean exit and I got the draft, but he had just enough in front that I wasn't able to make anything on him. So that was a little bit frustrating, even though I get down there super clean. I mean, I closed up half a second on him on just that one lap. So coming down, let's see if we can get up to 180 again. Really nail this braking zone. Absolutely perfect here. That was just phenomenal on the brakes in that section. Not to pat my own back or anything, but you know. Coming down the last corner, don't mess it up. Easy fifth place. I'm just doing my DR grind, so. Keep it clean. Flash my lights at the guys in front. They can't see, because whatever. The game can't render the headlights from like more than a half second behind it. So that was a pretty good result. I was pretty happy with that race. It was clean. Um, I didn't put myself in the right position to take advantage of a couple mistakes the guys are making in front of me, but not a big deal. We'll move on to the next race here. Uh, PX7 Optimal. Okay. So now I finally had a chance. I was excited about this because Super Chicken wasn't around. And uh, I was able to go one-on-one -on -one with uh, Mr. Optimal. But uh, you'll see something happens here. Kind of helps me out. That kind of sucks at the same time. As you can see here, it says, Hey, why did PX7 leave? Uh, WTF? That guy was really upset. But uh, it looks like he disconnected or something like that. And so it was just me at the top. Fortunately, only me, me and PX7 were the only two A-rated drivers, I think, in this lobby, so kind of a bummer. So competition it there, oh, there are a couple other A-rated drivers, but their, look at their qualifying times are eight-tenths slower in the best conditions. So. so the other thing, too, the tires aren't cold. You don't have to worry about any of that crap, really, in the first lap. Um, just on the daily race Bs. I do like doing a lot of the C races, uh, but when there's no pit stops, I don't really care. When you have to do two different compounds for tires, and you have to do fuel, I really like those races, but if it's just tire wear only, and I don't know, I don't really care too, more, or too much for it. So coming down the first straight, I don't know, I do know these guys have A ratings, so they should know how to race pretty well. So I just got to make sure I watch myself. I, I hit my braking zones perfect. Coming to that corner, great. We have to exit just right. I keep checking up on him, just making sure that, okay, he is still there, so he's got an understanding of what he needs to do here. So I take it easy. I just make sure I get on the power easy. I don't want to upset the car. I don't want it to get all squirrely on me. Not now, not in the front. I don't want to blow the lead. I got a chance of getting a win here. So... And especially on a DR grind, that's the that's something worth a lot of value. So, look at that! Oh man, I'm sorry. That's exciting. <laughs> that came through just so nice. So hit the braking zone again. You're off the brakes on that curb. Being off the brakes on that curb that helps the car stay stable. So come out of the exit here. Hit it. I got that exit pretty well figured out by this time of the night. And the first race in this video is the last race I did of the evening. But see how much uh, time I gained just on that exit alone. And that guy has the draft, and I dumped him. So coming down the chase, I can do really breaking zones now. Don't have to worry about the effect of the draft. Don't miss this braking zone. Easy again. Rolling off the brakes there, hella late. And then you get a roll into the gas in third gear on the exit. And man, this Viper just feels so good around this track. Especially when you can just focus on your lap times. So I'm losing this guy. He's like almost a second behind already. And that's just uh, 
on the opening laps here, but you'll see my consistency is absolutely absurd. And that's something that came with trying to get my lap time down. You know, you have, you have to do a lot of laps in order to get a decent lap time and or have a really good understanding of the track. And it, the only way to get that is peak time. And uh, so you start to learn every little thing about the track, where to let off here, how far you can get away with your braking zones, your turn-ins, how much uh, you can carry your speed here and there. And that's... that's I, a lot of that is just being able to sit down and do it. So, let off the gas, just off that bump, keep the car controlled, keep it pinned. I was absolutely flying through that mountain, I was super comfortable. Off the brakes, back on, third gear, bring it down to second, third gear on the exit. I should be shifting into third gear. Nice clean exit again. Coming down the chase. High speed, baby. Yeah. Sorry, ignore the part where I said baby. That's embarrassing. So, coming down the chase. Look at the speed difference. So I hit about 180 miles per hour in the draft when I was behind. And uh, now I'm only hitting 175-ish. So I can brake a lot later. And it helps keep the car a little bit more stable through these corners, too, because you're not trying to slow it down from such a big speed. So you can do... I just love the late braking on this track um, and diving into these corners, because a lot of them, like that guy, has like this tiny bit of camber on it. And when you lead the front of the car into that cambered part, it just grabs the front end right here. It just dips in and goes. I mean, it's just... it all works so well. I really enjoy this car and this track. So 2027. That's uh, two tenths off my best time. And uh, you'll see on this lap the consistency as well. I'm just I was just in the zone on this this whole run, and I really do think it's because I didn't have to deal with the cars in front of me. It did completely affect the ability to be them. So felt pretty confident at this point it was the last lap just putting in a clean banger coming out here just get right up against that wall right up against the grass against this wall too late turn in i went in a little early there probably could have gotten like a 2026 if i uh hit that turn in right i stayed on the throttle pretty late through here too brakes real quick i hit the brakes heavy should be going third gear though it would be so much more stable through there so let off the gas about halfway through the turn in. Some of the top guys are staying on the gas right until that blue line on the wall. It's that's main. I don't know when to turn in for that. But I'm pretty happy that I can get a 2027 utilizing that method. So here comes the chase again, last time, especially for tonight. Easy in. I got the easy win here, so don't blow it. I like shifting early out of there just to keep the car. It helps turn the car a little bit earlier, and it keeps it stable. And I seem to carry more speed out of there if I downshift or upshift uh, a little bit early. So, Anyways, get the win thanks to PX7 disconnecting. Easy four and a half seconds, five seconds. And uh, I think it's because that guy in the DB9 bunted the guy in the Corvette in the last corner, so not my problem. Anyway, so that's it. Thanks again for watching. Um, anybody who actually plays the game or anything, hit me up. Uh, you can see my screen name and we can play sometime. So, enjoy. Take care of yourself and uh, see you next time.